And uh, one of their basic human experiences is that rivers do not flow backwards. That's a very common experience. I think this is, even in Japan, true, probably. But this river flows backwards. So two months of the year in Maon, you see the river coming from uh, east, uh, from west to east, and then it fills a, a, a small lake. So you see the river bed, and you see the water. It's full of water, and it runs from west to east. When there is no rain coming from Angola, when there is no water following, it stops. And then the water from this small lake runs in, back into the same riverbed, and then it's from uh, east to west. So you stay there in the same place, and the river flows backwards. And there is also a, a, a cylinder spillway, which works the same way. So I, I, there are things which are completely different to our expectations. And the third, I don't know whether you remember, but the third is that we have the same communi communicative needs. And just looking at this picture, you can see that they, these people do have quite different communi communicative needs to Japanese people in Tokyo or Germans in Cologne. I mean, the, the situation is very different, and they talk about very different things. Um, so the, that's something which I find very useful for the small-scale communities or society for, uh, societies of intimates. That's from Gibbon. So they have a, a shared knowledge and they, the communication is face-to-face. -face. So these are just some pictures of uh, Kwe I'm working with, just to give you a short idea on that. Uh, I don't know why it's so slow. Um, and finally, I'm coming to, to what we as linguists deal with at the languages. So there is a high um, polysemic uh, occurrence, so expressions uh, with different but related meanings and only one li linguistic form. And, uh, oh, I'm already, um, and we tend to analyze. So I'm talking about concepts, and this is an example which, which shows how fast concepts sh change, and situations change, and uh, sources might not be visible anymore. You see this young boy, he is working the bellows. So this young boy on the right, he's working the bellows. They are blacksmith activities. So there are mel uh, um, he's heating up this. Uh, is increasing the heat by using the bellows. So the movement is like this. So he makes like this. And this term, so in, 19, in 1957, the first car entered this part of, of, of Africa. So that was the first car that the Quet people saw. And driving a car is Kuru. And this activity is Kuru. So this movement, this movement, is Kuru. And when you ask young people, because now their roads are different, there is a tar road, and uh, at that time there was no tar road. So when you ask, ask young people, they don't know why they, the old people call this Kuru, and now Kuru is the term to drive a car. But obviously, in old times, uh, they had no power steering, and their, their, their people saw just the hands, you know, with their huge uh, steer wheel coming up like this. So it was the same movement. And since it changed, uh, it's not visible anymore. So that's how fast things change. Another, another change of concept uh, can be dated between 1970 and 80. So God changed gender. So before that, it was female. And now it's male. And it's consistent. So old people still use their their feminine suffix he, and young always ma. And when you work with young people translating texts from old, they will always correct, because for them it's an insult you know, to, to use the feminine suffix. So they will always uh, translate a male version. And um, when I asked a young woman 
why her grandfather, while her, why her father is using Tianyinghe, uh, she said uh, maybe he, he, he speaks of Maria. No? I mean, for her to imagine that if, if there used to be a female god, it was just out of everything. I mean, impossible to, to follow. Then, okay, I'm leaving these things which are that. Okay, so here you see there, the Tao means footprint, trail, path, more recently road and highway. So it means footprint, from footprint up to highway, everything. And when you speak to older people, they will still associate Tao with the footprint, or the young one will translate, will they have the image of the highway. So conceptual change is a, something very important and it might happen quite rapidly. Uh, so these are just the roads which illustrate what Tao is. So this is the Tao road. Then in our translations, uh, we have to be very careful that um, we, might, we might influence our translations by these global concepts and categories. And, um, and we may even cause shifts. And an example which I did, so I'm, I, I'm responsible actually for, for some queer using this term now also for edible animal because I was insisting that this could also be meaning edible animal. But the real meaning is koho means meat. But, but since there is no term for animal, I pushed them into something like edible animal. So I asked, is this thing also kocho? And they said yes. And then I translated edible animal, but it's meat. And the idea of edible animal is because I pushed them into that. You know? So it's our I, I discovered that many of the informants of these old friends of mine, which I used in the beginning to as consult to to work as consultant with me, they're they're pretty useless now because uh, they follow my my ideas, you know. So they are they adapted, and this is something which is very dangerous, I think. Uh, so this is already the end. Um, so for the handbook, uh, I think that. In, this, in our documenting concepts, we must reflect the impact of our own concepts on categories, on documenting. Then uh, also the meaning assigned by the speakers themselves in, in these fieldwork situations are influenced by our presence and our kind of questions. And then um, the last is that we should document concepts in, uh, in natural, natural conversations and internal use, uh, usage patterns. So they shouldn't be asked independently. And uh, this is, I want to end here to have enough time to sort of relate this to Uchinaguchi in questions maybe you'll address to me.